Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Mukesh's Tech Space. Um, I received a few similar questions regarding how to update a multi-instance WordPress site. Um, specifically, how to update uh, plugins or install plugins, uh, themes, or even upgrade WordPress itself if there are two or more WordPress uh, installations in a, in, a, in a load balance setup. So in this video, I'll walk you through some options that I've uh, researched. And so without further ado, let's get started. So let's recap via a diagram of the environment that we set up in the three part series that I did on load balance WordPress sites. I'll, I'll link to those uh, videos in the info card above or in the description below for those of you that have, may not have seen, seen those uh, tutorials. Let's start out with showing the traffic coming in through the internet. And that traffic hits the AWS load balancer that we had set up, uh, light cell load balancer. <clears throat> the load balancer would then route visitors to either one of the two uh, light cell WordPress instances that we had configured. Um, each instance had its own installation of WordPress um, here's a typical list of folders that uh, we would see in a WordPress install um, WP content underneath that we would see plugins themes and uploads so each of these instances had a copy of the WP content folder so next we had configured the two instances to connect to an AWS s3 bucket to store and fetch our media files so any content that was uploaded uh, would be available to both of those instances. Uh, then finally, we also configured a database service that both the WordPress instances connected to um, so that the uh, content, uh, the database content, uh, would be shared between them. The problem here that was presented to me, and maybe we uh, didn't really talk about it during those original videos, but the problem that was presented by several of you that asked the question um, is, what if we wanted to update uh, plugins or themes, uh, you know, any new plugins that we want to add? How do we do that between two or more WordPress instances? If both of these are separate, then uploading it to one, then do we have to upload it to the next and install it? And how would all that work? Uh, so I did some research and I think we have a few options or maybe at least a couple of options. And I'll walk you through those options here in this video. And hopefully one of them suits your need or, or you can work with. Um, so let's do that. Okay, so let's go into what option one looks like. Option one here, we have two WordPress instances. Um, to do uh, updates to your plugins or themes, you would basically use the IP address for one of your WordPress instances. You can find the IP address on uh, the AWS uh, LightCell console or the dashboard. Uh, so you take that IP address, you log into your WP admin, you make any, or any of your install uh, or updates to your plugins or themes via the WP admin. You activate and configure it, uh, and and that's an important step. Is not just in, uh, you know uh, installing the plugin or a theme, but go ahead and activate it, configure it, um, so that those changes are stored in the options table in uh, in the database. Uh, then you go ahead and you know test it, make sure the the plugin is working. Uh, at that point, download the theme or plugin folders from the uh, first instance down to your computer, and you can use something like an uh, SSH client or an FTP client. Uh, when I walk you through it, I'll, I'll show you what I use, and then uh, log into your second. WordPress instance using the IP address, uh, again using the SSH client, log in and upload those files and folders and overriding any existing uh, plugin folders that may already be there. So once you've done that, 
log into your second instance using the IP address. Uh, go ahead and you can you know log into the WP admin as well and verify that the plugin is activated there. Any configuration changes you may have made, those show up in your second instance. And if all of that is good, you're practically done. And you can now uh, uh, test out by going to your website using the uh, domain that you've configured. That way you're going through the load balancer and uh, routing to either one of those instances and see your new changes. Uh, so that's option one. And uh, now let's go to option two. Okay, so in this second option, um, what we're going to do is a bit, in my opinion, a bit more simpler. Um, uh, let's look at the diagram again. Option two, uh, we have our load balancer that's in front of our two or more WordPress instances. And they're all at they're both attached to the load balancer. So any traffic coming in will be routed to either one of these. So if we wanted to update plugins or themes, um, in option two, what we would first do is detach the uh, one of the WordPress instances from the load balancer. So essentially, you would take um, uh, uh, go into the AWS console, into the networking tab, and uh, detach one of these instances. So that makes basically this one single instance that is going to be receiving all the traffic from uh, your load balancer. Uh, at that point, go ahead and log into your WP admin, perform any of the installations or updates that you need to do for your plugins or uh, your themes or, um, or anything else. Uh, activate those, configure them, and test them out. Uh, basically, make sure everything's working fine. Once you've confirmed it's good, go back into the AWS console and make a snapshot of your um, uh, WordPress instance that you are working on. So uh, there's a, and I'll, sh I'll walk you through this, but in AWS console, you'll be able to make a snapshot. Then spin up a brand new instance using that snapshot. So then you will have a second WordPress instance, or actually a third WordPress instance in this case, that will be the updated WordPress instance number two. And um, at that point, then go back into your load balancer configuration and attach the um, attach the uh, updated WordPress instance to your um, uh, to your load balancer. So then it starts to receive uh, traffic. Uh, then you can go, once you've confirmed then everything is working fine, you can go back and delete that uh, other third WordPress instance that we had taken offline. And in that way, you now have uh, the updates made to both instances, obviously because this was a copy of the first one, and everything is good. I like this route better than option one, because in this, in, in this scenario, both of your instances are exactly replicas because once you update one and make a snapshot, it's going to be a replica. Number two, um, in option number one, I didn't explain, but if you were to update WordPress itself, then I think it, it gets a little bit more complicated. So, But in this option, if you were to do your updates to even the WordPress install itself, that will get replicated. Um, also, if the server needs any package updates, uh, then also that could be replicated via the snapshot feature. So I like this and um, and I would recommend going with this option as well. It does require a little bit more work in terms of uh, deleting snapshots, creating snapshots and things like that, but I think it's more it's a bit more straightforward. Uh, so next we're going to walk through both of those options. I'll walk you through how to do them, uh, starting with option number one uh, now and then we'll do option number two. So with option one, we'll log into one of the instances and update the plugin and then copy the plugin over to the second instance. So here are the two instances uh, that I have running uh, that are both uh, load balanced with a load balancer. Uh, we'll go into the one of the WordPress instances via the IP address. So copy the IP address, 
paste it here and then WP admin. There we go. Log in. And uh, once we're in, we just basically go and do whatever we want to do. Um, we could update all of these plugins or we could add a new plugin. So in the case of adding a new plugin, let's go here and just pick any one of these. Um, let's do, well, let's do, let's say we want to do a contact form. So search for contact form. And uh, sure, we'll install this. Activate. <clears throat> and then if I, at this point, wanted to configure the form or configure any settings, things like that, let's go ahead and make sure we do that now. And um, once we've done that, then we'll go ahead and download the, uh, the plugin uh, folders. So to do that, we'll SSH. Uh, into our WordPress light cell instance. So let's go to copy this, open up. I'm using the Bitvise SSH client, um, but you could use any FTP tool or, or any other software that you like. But let's type that IP address, log in, and go to apps. WordPress. So basically you're going to your WP content folder. This path could be different for you. And then let's download contact form seven, which is a plugin that I just installed. Download that. Okay. So it looks like I have it right here. Now what we'll do is log into our second WordPress instance for us. That's WordPress 2. Copy that IP address. Paste that. Uh, log out. Log in. There we go. So this is our second one. And you'll see here, we'll just need to upload that plugin. Now you'll see here the contact form 7 is not here. Upload. There we go. So just to make sure that the second instance did receive the activation and all that, we'll log into our second uh, WordPress instance. In that case it's three dot user and then let's copy the password here. There we go, and we'll go to plugins, and we'll see that that is also activated. Um, so the plugin is now on both of our uh, instances, and we're good to go. So that's the first option. Option number two involves doing the same activity of updating or um, um, installing your plugins on one of the instances. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do the detachment. So you'll go to your load balancer. These are your two WordPress instances. Now pick any one of these that you want to use for your primary instance. So let's just say we're gonna go with WordPress one instance, two, go ahead and detach it. Yes. Okay, so my second instance was detached. As you'll see here, it, it notes, traffic is only being routed to a single instance, which is what we want. Now we can log in to um, our single WordPress instance using the domain name, so going through the load balancer like everything would. I'm gonna use this domain name here that's given to the load balancer, but you would have your own uh, website's domain. So we'll use that. And there's our site. So let's log in. And uh, we'll just make uh, some other changes. So let's add, let's say we wanted to start a shopping site. So let's add WooCommerce. There we go. 
let's go ahead and install the plugin and go ahead and activate it. Okay. And then it wants to do various configurations. So let's go ahead and walk through that and we're done. So we've configured everything we've installed. In fact, what you would um, also want to do uh, at this point, uh, let's say you wanted to update WordPress uh, to the latest uh, version. You can do that here as well. So because you have a single instance going, go ahead and do, you know, take care of all the updates that you need to take care, uh, take care of. So we've done our updates. So what we do here next is go to your LightSail instance, the one that is running, or the one that we made the updates against. And in our case, it was WordPress one. As you, as you'll remember, we dis we detached WordPress instance number two. So we'll go to WordPress number one, go to the snapshot screen, and create a snapshot. All right, so our instance uh, snapshot was uh, made. So next thing we'll do is create a brand new instance based on this snapshot. Remember this snapshot has all of our updates because we made the updates on the WordPress one instance. And so it has, um, in our example, was WooCommerce, Jetpack, and the update of WordPress. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to home. So click on Create new instance, WordPress 3, create, and your third instance is spinning up. Uh, while it's coming up, let's go ahead and stop WordPress 2 because we know that that's now an old WordPress instance. So we'll go ahead and stop it and eventually you can basically delete it so uh, you don't get charged for having this instance around. You no longer, we're never going to use it anymore. All right, our new instance is up and running. So let's attach it back into our load balance uh, environment so that we can receive traffic on both instances. So go to your load balancer page, attach another, select your brand new instance and uh, attach it. Okay, well after a few minutes, um, it should attach and be ready to take on traffic from your load balancer. So that's it. That's how you would update your WordPress plugins or themes um, and this option number two. Again, I mentioned in the beginning, this is probably the preferred route. Um, it does take a little bit longer, uh, but I think it's, it's probably uh, a bit safer to do this route um, than to um, download plugin files and upload plugin files and things like that. So um, hopefully, hopefully you found this useful. And for those that asked me these questions, hopefully this answered uh, <clears throat> your question on how to update the sites. Um, if you did find it useful, give it a thumbs up, um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and share this video so that others can take advantage of it. So until next time, take care.